Hey, how y'all doing out there? I'm back with you with another video. Today I want to do my review for the LG V60 5G. Now, of course, this phone came out almost a year ago. And, um, you know, when it first was released, I just wasn't all that interested in it, to be honest with you, because it was pretty much similar to that of the LG um, G8X, which I had, and I really just didn't care for that device, honestly. <laughs> you know, it was just... I just didn't care for it, honestly. And um, when this came out, of course, there was a lot of hoopla and how, you know, about it and how good it was and everything like that. I just wasn't interested. I'm not the, I'm just not big on LG, honestly. I mean, they're not a bad company, but I think the things that turn me off a lot of times, they didn't quite keep up with the competition as far as certain specs are concerned. They kind of lagging behind. And then the thing that really turned me off the most with them is the really, really slow software updates and they're still bad you know when it comes to that but i will say this this is not a comparison video as you can and i know you see two phones on the table but this is the lg v30 now up until i got the lg v60 this was my favorite lg phone of all time period now i've had the lg g3 the lg g4 i didn't get the g5 um, the G6, I don't remember. No, I think what happened after the G4, I started getting the V series. So I had the LG G4, I mean, the LG V3, the LG G4, the, the uh, V10, the V20, the V30. I got the V40, didn't like it at all. Um, the, the LG G8X didn't like that. And I didn't get the, the LG V50. So, but out of all the LG phones that I've owned, the LG V30 has been my favorite device, period. Now, <laughs> honestly, now I think there's a changing of the guard because I am very impressed with the LG V60. Now, of course, there's some things about it I don't like, which is typical for most people with any device because there's no perfect device. Now, there's devices that are perfect for you, but the device itself is not going to be perfect. It's always going to be something about it that you're not going to like same thing with me when it comes to smartphones there's always going to be things that i don't like but first i want to get into all the things that i do like first now the only the reason why i got the lg v30 on the table because there's a few things i have to compare between the v30 and the v60 and it's only really three things so when i get to that then i'll let you know what that is all right now, first, let's start with the build quality. Now, the build quality on this phone is absolutely great. Now, let me take this case off so you can see. I mean, this thing is beautiful. You got that nice, be beautiful color. I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous. And it feels so comfortable. It feels solid. Definitely not cheap. It has Gorilla Glass 5 on the front, Gorilla Glass 6 on the back. This, the build quality on this is excellent. I mean, seriously. And I think it's military grade, um, tested for drops and stuff, even though I prefer a case. But you can definitely use this without a case, and it feels very, very comfortable in your hand. You know, the corners are rounded. It won't stab you in your palm of your hand. It has, like, nice weight. It has a nice thickness. Now, I know there's people out there that like thin phones. I don't really like thin phones. I prefer a phone with a little thickness. You know, it just feels more comfortable, you know, more substantial in my hand with a thicker uh, device. So the build quality on this is A1. I mean, it's excellent, seriously. So I love the build quality. All right, now let's talk about the size of the device. Now, it's a 6.8 inch display, so it's big, and it's basically the same size as my Note, you know, my Note 10 Plus, 6.8 inches. I prefer big, giant phones because I like to enjoy media content on my phone, and when I'm watching movies and things like that, I want a big display, but that's just me. You know, I can't, I'm not, I can't speak for everybody. That's just what I prefer, all right? So I like the size of this display, 6.8 inches. Next, let's talk about the design. Now, 
I definitely like the design of the phone. Now, this reminds me a lot of the L, um, the Samsung V, um, Samsung S10, because the cameras were exactly like this. Okay, so I definitely like the design. The design is nice. Now, when you talk, get around the front, then that's a different story. But we'll get to that later. All right. So the next thing, let's talk about the always-on display. As you can see, I love it. You know, got my picture of me and my wife there. You got the time, the the date, the day. You got your notifications at the bottom. LG has always made great always-on displays like that of Samsung, but they've always been behind Samsung overall when it comes to always-on displays. Now, I want to show you the difference between the always-on display with the LG V60 and the LG V30. Oh, sorry, I got to turn it back off. Sorry about that. Look at the difference. Look how much bigger the LG V60s is. I mean, how, sorry. Look how much bigger the LG V30s is. Everything is bigger. The, the picture is bigger. The clock is bigger. Everything is bigger. You don't have that long, that bar across. I prefer the one on here because it's much bigger and it definitely gets brighter. So... Maybe they made it smaller to maybe to help conserve the battery, but I don't think that should be an issue because this one has a 3,300 milliamp battery and I'm getting two days with a quad HD display. So I definitely like the always on display better on the V30, but I like the fact the LG has an always on display and I love it. You know, it's um, functional. It's not as fully functional as Samsung's, but it's definitely a nice always on display second behind Samsung. So I love the always on display on this device. Next thing, let's talk about the display. Now we got a 1080p full HD plus POLED display with HDR10 plus. Now I do like the display on this phone. It gets nice and bright. Um, the colors are nice. Now I turned it down for the review so it don't be too bright, but it is a nice display. Now, do I prefer a quad HD plus? Yes, because quad HD plus display is going to look better. Not that this looks bad, because it don't. It's a beautiful display. But eight, uh, Quiet HD looks better, and I can tell the difference. Now, I know there are YouTubers out there that saying you can't tell the difference, they can't tell the difference. That's fine. You can't tell the difference, but don't act like nobody else can, and nobody will be able to t uh, tell the difference, because I can. I'm used to using phones with Quiet HD displays, and I can tell the difference between Full HD and Quiet HD. OK, now the thing I like about this device is that it gets really nice and bright. Unlike the previous two LG phones I had, they didn't really get that bright. But this one gets nice and bright. Colors are nice and vivid. And, it, and it's, a, it's a beautiful display. It's not a great display in my estimation, but it is a very good display. Now, I want to show you the difference between the display with that one and the V30. Now, oh, let me turn it down. I got it maxed out. <laughs> Because I always max out everything. All right, let me turn this down. Now, you may not be able to tell the difference with this particular wallpaper, but um, this display gets almost as bright as this one. But the overall um, vividness and the sharpness and, and, the, and the punchy colors are better on the V30 than that of the V60. Because this is a Quad HD plus display so i don't really know why uh lg decided to ditch the quad hd the quad hd display when they've always had them on their devices um and i hope it's not because of battery because this one has a 3300 milliamp battery and i get two days this phone is like three years old and i still get two days of battery life this one gets great battery life too okay but it would have been nice to have the option of quad hd on this device see I don't know if you can tell but I can tell the difference when it comes to um, the beautiness of the display now like I said the V60 does look good but the quad HD looks better now I don't know if you can tell but I can tell all right so the display is something I do like but I do wish it was a quad HD display I really do all right, next, the dual stereo speakers. Now, this is something that really impressed me with the LG V60 because the LG G8 speakers were lousy. I mean, they were terrible. They just sounded bad. 
and the V40 didn't sound that good either. But these dual speakers on this phone sounds really good. Let me give you a, a sound, two sound test, and you can hear it for yourself. That's max, max volume. These speakers really, really impressed me. These are some of the best speakers um, out of all the phones that I have. Not the best, but they're up there with the other, you know, some of the other devices that I have. These speakers sound really good. I'm definitely impressed. Let me let you hear how a movie sounds. Turn on this brightness a little bit. So as you can see, you're going to get a good experience, you know, viewing content on this and with the speakers because they sound really, really good. All right. The next thing. 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Yes, the headphone jack. Now, LG is the only one that's left far as a flagship device that has hung on to the headphone jack. And I'm sure there's a lot of people out there <clears throat> that are very happy about this. I know I'm one of them because... Of the next thing that I love about this device is the 32-bit Hi-Fi Quad DAT. It sounds absolutely amazing on this device. You plug in a set of headphones, whether they the best quality headphones or maybe mid-tier, you're still going to get a great audio experience out of the headphone jack on this device. And I'm very glad and happy with LG that they kept the headphone jack. And I don't know if they're going to keep it. With their next device or not, I'm not sure because right now they're having some issues with money. I'm hearing they may shut down their smartphone uh, line altogether or sell it to somebody else. But they're in some financial problem, you know, having some financial issues right now. So I don't know if they decide to sell it and somebody comes in and and now all of a sudden you don't get the headphone jack. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to wait and see what happens. But as of as of to date with this device. You got not only a headphone jack, but you got a great 32-bit hi-fi quad DAC built in. You're going to get great audio sound out of this device, and I absolutely love it. Next thing I love about this device is the 8 gigs of RAM. Now, I'm used to other phones now because I, you know, I'm, I'm a really flagship type of guy. So I'm used to 12 gigs of RAM, which I'm getting on like most of my phones now. But this has 8 gigs, and 8 gigs is good. You know, you'll be able to hold... A lot of apps running in the background. It'll be fine for gaming. It'll it'll it allows your phone to run a little faster, a little smoother. So I do definitely like the eight gigs of RAM as opposed to six gigs of RAM. Next thing, let's talk about the battery, the battery and the battery life. So you got a five thousand milliamp battery, and I'm gonna tell y'all right now, I'm very impressed with the battery. Now LG has always had really good battery life on their devices, so I've never really had an issue with when it comes to battery life with their phones. <clears throat> but this phone is excellent. Now, the thing that really kind of trips me out a little bit, I get two days with a 3,300 milliamp battery, and I'm getting two days with a 5,000 milliamp battery. So y'all tell me what's wrong with that. And this has a Quad HD Plus display. So y'all help me figure that one out, okay? But anyway, <laughs> with heavy usage, heavy usage, y'all, listen to me, I'm getting two days, okay? Or I would say a day and a half, 
to two days heavy usage. Now, if you use this phone moderately or light to moderate, you could probably get three days. That's how good the battery life is on this device. So you will absolutely love the, the battery life on this device. Now, battery life is subjective and it always comes down to how you use your phone. If you're shooting a bunch of 4K and doing certain things in gaming, I don't know because I'm not a gamer and I don't shoot um, 4K video. So I don't know how it'll work, how good it is if you do a lot of that. Will you get? I mean, you'll still get a full day guarantee, but I don't know if you'll get f two full days if you're doing all of that. So it's going to vary how you use your phone. Now, most people are not shooting a ton of 4K video. You know, they're not gaming. I think the average person is not gaming a lot on their phone. If they are, they're not pay playing a, a whole lot of high intensity graphic type games i don't think they're doing that but i could be wrong y'all tell me y'all y'all let me know in the comments below all right but um battery life on this phone is solid it's very good i have no issues with the battery life at all love it all right next let's talk about the ip68 water and dust resistance that's something also i like so i don't have to worry about my phone getting any water damage whatsoever if you want to Take it in the bathroom with you, you're showering in the tub or whatever, or you go to a water park, you get caught in the rain, no problem. Okay? You covered. Next thing, the wireless charging. Now, I always prefer a device with wireless charging because I utilize wireless charging every single day. So I love the fact that it has wireless charging. Next thing, expandable memory. Now that's something all of a sudden that's becoming extinct. And I'm and I'm looking at you, Samsung, like that's something that people always loved about Samsung devices, the expandable memory. And now they've removed it off of their S line, which I'm completely and utterly upset about. And right now I'm just done with Samsung. They just they going in a direction I don't like. So but this phone, if you worried about expandable memory, don't. Two terabytes. So you got unlimited storage on this phone, pretty much. All right. Next thing, let's talk about the in-display optical fingerprint sensor, which I absolutely am impressed with compared to the last one that I used from them. It was pretty bad. This one is good. Opens right up, 100%, no problems. Boom, right open. Now, the thing that I like about this the, the most, I like the way it looks. It doesn't look like a fingerprint sensor. I like the look. And also, you get an animation and you get haptic feedback which is what you don't get on a Samsung device. You get no animation and no haptic feedback. So I really, I'm very impressed with this fingerprint sensor. You're gonna like the fingerprint sensor on this device. It's, it's nice and fast. It's pretty much, I would say 99.99% accurate. <laughs> so it's accurate and it's, and it's, now I'm not saying it's the fastest out there, but you're not gonna be annoyed with you know, having to put your finger a certain way or not opening most times when you use it, you're not going to have that issue. It's good. It's really good. Next thing, you got the Google button on the side. Now, I don't use this, honestly, because I don't remember it's there. But it is there. It's right here on the side. If you need to use it, you just press it. You just press it, and it comes right up. Okay? So, it's cool that they have a Google button there. It's, it's unfortunate that you can't um, remap it to do other things besides yeah, Google. I'm unable to answer your question. Yes, it's, it's it's a shame you can't remap it or use it to open up other apps like my Samsung Note 10 Plus can do. I can, you know, um, you know, rework it where it can open up pretty much any app that I want, but you can't do that with LG. Next, the performance. Now the performance on this phone is very fast. It's snappy and it's smooth. I'm very impressed with the performance of this device. Very much so. Just like the LG V30 to this day. Now this phone was released in two, uh, 2017. It's still fast, snappy, and smooth to this day. No different on the LG V60. Now with the cameras. Cameras, I've always been impressed with LG um, photos and videos. Now me and my wife was just looking at some photos and videos um, on yesterday, you know, trips that we took in the past, you know, and um, <clears throat> I, I didn't realize it, but so many trips we went on, I took a lot of the photos and videos with my LG V30. And I was just completely blown away with the quality of the photos and the videos 
of that device. I mean, just blown away. Just, I'm like professional type quality. That's how good they were. Now, this phone is no different. Top of the line quality when it comes to, to the photos and the videos on this device. I mean, excellent. Absolutely love it. But I'll let you be, you know, the judge of that because you may see things different than me. That's what makes it all different. What I like, you may not like. What you like, I might like. So you check out the photos and the videos and y'all tell me what you think. Let me get into all the things that I don't like. First thing is the notch. I don't like that notch. I don't like that. I would have rather them had not had that. I wish they could have gotten rid of that. Now, the reason why I got this here again, because I want to compare. Now, look at look at the, the, the top bezel. They, they're pretty much almost the same size. Okay, and there's a front-facing camera under this bezel. So why put that dip in there and, and mess up the symmetry of the top of that display? Why do that when you didn't have to? You could have just made the camera a little smaller. And this phone has face unlock, unlike this one. So that was to me, that was completely unnecessary, and I don't like that. Okay, I don't like no phone with a notch. I just, I don't. Now, I don't mind the little camera cutout, like, like, you know, like most companies are doing today. They're doing the little camera cutouts. I don't mind that, but I don't like a dip down into the display like that. I just don't like that. It was, it was not implemented very well, so I don't like that, and LG didn't have to do that. Next thing, the thick bezels around the sides of the display, I don't like. You know, I don't know. You can see them right there. I don't like those thick bezels. They should have had those bezels completely a lot thinner. I don't mind the one at the bottom, but the ones on the side should should have been a lot thinner than that. You know, keeping up with the times, you know. Everybody's thinning out their bezels, so I don't know why LG put such thick bezels on the side. Next thing, no Quad HD display. Like I said, LG had been putting Quad HD displays on their phone. I don't know why they didn't give us a choice whether we wanted to have one or not. At least give us the op the option to have one as opposed to just taking off the phone altogether. So I don't like that. <clears throat> Next thing, no face unlock. Now, like I said, the V30 has face unlock. This one doesn't. I don't know why. Both have front-facing cameras. Why can't I have face unlock? So that's not something that makes sense to me why LG removed that feature from the phone. That's a, a pretty much fundamental feature. There's $150 phones that have face unlock, so I don't understand that one. 
very disappointed. Next thing, now this is not a big deal to everybody, but when you get used to certain things, you, you, you want them, especially a flagship device. No high refresh rate. What I mean by that, no, like I would have been cool with a 90 hertz display. Now I don't have to have 120 hertz because I have 90 hertz um, display phones that are just as good as 120 hertz. So, but just to have a 90 hertz refresh rate would have been nice. Maybe the average person don't know what it is, they don't care, but it adds an extra layer of smoothness to your U, your UI experience. Um, scrolling is so much smoother and it's faster. It just makes your makes all the animations look smoother. It just really makes it just gives you an overall um, great experience with you know when you're navigating your phone going in and out of apps and all that. It just looks great. So I would have it would have been nice if LG would have put that you know a high refresh rate on a device. 90 hertz would have been cool. Don't have to be 120 hertz, but 90 would have been good. Next thing, no super fast wired charging. The charging speeds on this phone is pretty pathetic compared to the competition. You know, remember, this is a 2020 device. Okay, everybody's 25 watt, 30 watt, 65 watt, 120 watt. Now, I'm not saying they got to go crazy, but for your phone to take almost two hours to fully, to fully charge is, is really ridiculously slow, especially for a 2020 flagship. And it's slow. An hour, over an hour and 40 minutes from zero to 100%. And when you're going from zero now in 40 minutes, it takes you 40 minutes just to get 53%. Yeah, that's really slow. So I'm disappointed that LG didn't have any type of super fast charging. They were still using quick charging on this, which is which is which is played out. It's just it is, it just is at this point. This phone definitely should be charging a lot faster. And the very slow wireless charging. Okay, zero to 100% three hours three hours when i have a, a mi 10 pro 65 minutes wireless charging 30 watt wireless charging 65 minutes full okay so they got to do a lot better at least give us 15 watt or 18 watt fast wireless charging would be nice three over three hours is too long that's too slow next thing no wide angle lens on the front facing camera that's also a disappointment because this one has a wide angle lens on the front facing camera. So I'm not sure why they took it off the V60. No 4K at 60 frames per second on the front facing camera. Don't have that. Next thing, no headphones in the box. Now this is the issue I've had with LG for years now because <clears throat> with the LG V10 and I, I don't know about the V20, but I know with the V10 they had headphones with the LG G4 headphone, you know, their previous phones, they had headphones now. Why would you put a great 32-bit uh, hi-fi quad deck and don't even give us any headphones? So I don't like that. Next thing, no case in the box. Now I know, now this phone, you could get the phone with it with that double dual case. Now I did not get the dual case because it's too big and it's too bulky. If I forgot to say that in the beginning, um, I just didn't want it. It just didn't interest me, but uh, just a regular clear gel case would have been cool. I would have been fine with that. But no case whatsoever, I don't like that. Next thing, no pre-installed screen protector. That would have been nice. A lot of companies are starting to do that. They put one screen protector on the phone. Now, some people take it off, some people don't. Now, me, I would not take it off because I don't want to go through the hassle of trying to put one on a phone. So I would have loved if LG would have put a pre-installed screen protector on this device. Next thing, the power button is a little high. Now, it's right here where my thumb is. Now, I don't have huge hands and long fingers, but if I'm just resting my, this is the way I usually hold my phone, that power button should be right here where my thumb is at. But it's all the way up here, so you kind of kind of have to reach unless you have really large hands or long fingers, which I don't. So, But it's just a little too high. It should be a little lower, and I wish that the volume buttons were on the right side of the device as well. So... I know for some of you that's not going to matter. You you good with that? And the very last thing, it's extremely slow updates. The, I mean, their track record when it comes to software has been horrendous. I mean, horrible. Still no Android 11 to date, and I think it's just pathetic. And the, the security um, updates are slow as well. So LG, I just hope at some point. 
they get their stuff together where they, you know, get a lot faster with softer updates. They have not improved um, over the years. They, they, if anything, they've gotten worse. So those are all the things that I like and I don't like about this device. Overall, I'll tell you right now, I really like this device a lot. And it has finally taken the place of the, v, of the V30. Now, I'm still going to keep my V30, but it's a bigger display. It's got better speakers because this one, that this is the one thing that killed this phone. The, this, the one down firing mono speaker was terrible. But this thing has dual stereo speakers and they sound <clears throat> phenomenal. The display gets nice and bright. <clears throat> the battery is great. But I say more so, more than anything, the reason why the V60 takes the place of the V30 is because of the size of the device and the um, those speakers, the size and those speakers. Because this one has just as good as a camera as that one. <laughs> I know because I I have both of them, and but this one has a quad HD display, a bigger and brighter always on display, and um. <clears throat> And um, I like the the way the, um, you know, I like the symmetry when it comes to the display. I like that there's no notch. You know, you just got that thin chin and thin forehead, and I'm good with that. Okay? So, I, I still love my V30. But this is a great device, and it's now my favorite LG device. So, really quick, let me get into the things of the, the um OS and then I'll be out of your way for those that are going to stick around for this. I appreciate it. I'll try to make this as quickly as I can. All right. So let's get into the OS. So now with your network and internet, your typical stuff, airplane mode, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi calling, mobile networks, data manager, call tethering, VPN, wireless emergency alerts, and private DNSs. Connected devices, you got your Bluetooth, your screen sharing, which you can share your screen with the TV. You got NFC, sharing your panel, file sharing, media server, mirror link, and printing. You can hook this phone up to a wireless printer, which is cool. That may come in handy. When you get the sound, I got an assignment right now. You control your volume on here, set your volume, ringtone, default notification, Ring with a vibration, ring ID, flash alert for incoming calls. Now, flash blinks according to LG ringtone. You can set that up, all right? You got do not disturb, which is sound quality and effects. Now, this is when you start getting into the quad, the quad dat. You got your volume up here. You can normalize your volume, meaning automatically adjust media to play at same volume. You got your equalizer. I got it at normal. But, of course, you can change it to different things that you can see here, all right? You got your LG 3D sound engine. You can turn that on. And down here, you have your quad DAC settings. Now, it's not lit up now because I don't have a pair of headphones hooked up. But when you hook up your headphones, that'll light up and you can make adjustments as far as your quad DAC is concerned. Okay. Come back. Oh, sorry. Going to go back in here. Moving too fast. You got your vibration strength, your vibration type. Vibration on tap when you're tapping it. Now, I will say the the haptic feedback on here is excellent when you're typing. It's very, very good. You're going to definitely like that a lot. Um, dialing keyboard sound, LG keyboard sound, touch sound, screen lock sound, all those goodies. Let's get into notifications. You got apps, lock screen. I have it to show all my notifications. Status bar icons, allow notification snoozing, suggested action and replies, icon badges, Brief notice notifications. Now, basically, that gives you a bubble notification. Basically, it's like having edge lighting. So when you get a, um, a notification and the screen is off, it has a, a blue ring around the whole phone that goes around and lets you know that you got a um, notification, which I like that. Cause it's got your side light here, and you could I have it on for all my apps. Okay, so that's cool. I like that. Let me see. All right. Display. Now with display, of course, you got your home screen. I got it using Nova Launcher. You can press wallpaper. You can set up different wallpapers, themes, icons, and always on display. 
All right, comfort view, reduce eye strain when less blue light on the screen. So that's your blue light filter. Uh, of course, you got your navigation bar. You can use gestures or buttons. I like to use the gestures. They give you a gesture guide, basically show you how to, to um, use your gestures. You keep going to next and it shows you exactly what you're doing and how to um, navigate your gestures. So you don't have to try to figure it out. It'll basically show you. Oh, sorry about that. Now it's not, now it doesn't want to let me out. All right, sorry about that. Go back in here again. Was a notification? Okay. Nope, we got that. We were down at display. All right, sorry about that. Okay, so now with the night mode, you can you can put on night mode, turn off a high contrast screen. You got screen color. Now with this, basically, you can set up, you can have it automatically adjust. You know, LG can adjust it for you. You got cinema, sports, game, photos, web. I got it on expert. You can control how cooler and how warmer the display is. And of course you have here your reds, your greens, your blues. And then every time you change it, this is gonna look different. So if you get the look that you want, just click on it and that's the way it'll look. Now I like expert. I like as vivid as possible because that's just, you know, that's just how I like my display. All right, you got, you can also get video enhancer, which I like because you get to watch full screen videos in brighter and more vibrant colors, which I love. You got your font sizes, display size, app scaling, your brightness. Right now I got it for 44% only because if I had it up as high as I normally like it, it'd be too bright for the camera. You got your auto brightness. Basically, you can set that up and it'll adjust uh, depending on the, the available light in the room or where, wherever you're at. Screen timeout. I got it set for 10 minutes, but you could change that. Auto rotate. You can um, have that where when you turn the phone in the landscape mode, it'll change with you. The one-handed screen. Now, I really can't show you that <clears throat> only because it's very hard to get it to work. And I don't like it. I forgot to put that down as one thing I don't like because it's very hard to implement. And I don't like it because only about half of the screen, the whole screen just comes down just a little bit. Unlike Samsung where the whole screen gets smaller and it goes into the corner, it doesn't operate like that. So I don't like the one-handed mode on this device at all. Wallpapers and themes, that's pretty much self-explanatory. Uh, lock screen, security, basically you got your security update, which I said is now up to date, December 1st. You got find my device, Google Play system update, select your screen lock. You can use your pen or fingerprint, or you can use a pattern, it's up to you. You can customize the lock screen, secure your lock screen, meaning you could have it set where it, it uh, locks in 30 seconds, a minute, however, or you could have it lock immediately when you hit the power button or when it times out fingerprints you can basically just you know that just to unlock with your fingerprint content lock you could put um lock gallery files and quick memos you can use your fingerprint to unlock that encryption credentials you know no big deal with the rest of the stuff here let me see privacy permission manager basically this basically allows you to you know permission manager going here and you for every app you can allow or not allow certain things if you want. Gives you more control over your device. Make your passwords visible. I don't know who would want to do that. Why would you make your password visible to anybody? You got autofill service from Google that can automatically fill in your password, credit card information, your address, all that. Google lo lo location history um, saves where you go into your device. You can actually turn that off. Activity control, choose the activities and info. Um, allow Google to save ads, you know, no big deal with that stuff. Extensions. Let's look at extensions. So you got smart cleaning. So you click on that. Basically, you can go in there, clean your internal storage, clean up your memory, optimize your phone. You can see your battery usage, battery saver, and you can test the hardware. So basically, use this to optimize your device so it'll run even better and your battery will run more efficiently. Context awareness. Go in here. Basically, you can use this where... You can tell you it's, it's, it's similar to um, Samsung's Bixby. I mean, Bixby routines. Basically, <clears throat> when I'm at home, I want my Wi-Fi on. When I'm away from my house, I want my Wi-Fi to turn off because I don't need it at that point. Then I can select what my phone does when I'm at work, when I'm off work. When my earphones are plugged in, I have it to open Spotify. When Bluetooth devices are connected, I can have it 
uh, connect automatically and open up a certain app. So that's cool. Personalized services. You can get intelligent results when using integrated search. I never used that, so I'm not really all that familiar with it. Then you got a mode for gaming. You can use a game launcher, game tools, game graphics, and you got break time. That means reduce brightness and performance whenever you leave the game running for more than five minutes. That should save on your battery. Okay. All right. Dual apps. You can use two separate accounts for an app by installing a copy of the app. So you can do that. App suggestions. You got pen support. So if you end up getting a pen, a LG pen, you can use this on here. You got your pen key shortcuts, your pen pop-up shortcuts, memo preview, drawing sound, and show pointer. Now, I'm not going to use a pen because I don't want to have to carry stuff around. I prefer a pen that's already tucked away inside the phone. Or if they had a case where I could put it, snap it to the case, then I'd probably be more likely to use it. Okay, you got your shortcuts. You got knock on, double tap to sleep the screen, double tap to wake the screen. You got screen touch sensitivity. You can make the screen more sensitive, and they recommend that when using a screen protector. And when you go to, I think I, that's all with extensions, let me see. Yep. So let me get to apps. Apps is usually app information, default apps, special access, permission manager, screen time today, hour and nine minutes, no biggie. The battery, you get your battery usage. As you can say, I've been on the battery now eight hours. Um, I got 80, 86% left and I've been on the screen an hour and a half. Gives you details of how much what app you're using the most battery with. You got your battery percentage on the status bar. You can optimize the charging, automatically adjust charging speed according to how you charge to reduce heat and extend life lifespan of the battery. Now that's important because heat and battery don't get along. So if you can have it where you can reduce the heat when you charging your battery, that's good because your battery lasts longer. And let me say this, the less, the less times you charge your battery, the longer your battery is going to last. So if you got to charge your phone twice a day, you're going to you're going to run down a battery a lot faster. But if you get a battery that can last 2 to 3 days and you're charging your phone less, your battery is going to last a lot longer. You got adaptive battery, limit battery for apps you don't use often by limiting the activity in the background. You can restrict apps in the background. You got your battery saver, power saving inclusions, and your app usage. All right? Of course, you have your storage. I'm using 56 of um, 56 gigs out of 128. SD card, I got a 512 SD card in there. I only got one gig left. That That's why I say I need a phone with expandable memory because I use a lot of gigage. Of course, you got your accounts, your digital well-being, Google, systems, accessibility. So that's pretty much it. But I will say this again. I absolutely love this device this device is definitely in my rotation most definitely in my rotation this phone is a beast for all those out there that love lg you definitely gonna love this device if you decide to upgrade to this device you're gonna love it honestly because you're getting great build quality you're getting great cameras and videos you're getting great speakers you're getting a nice, big, and bright display. You're getting great battery life. You're getting expandable memory. You're getting IP68 water and dust resistance. You're getting an in-display fingerprint since you're getting wireless charging. So you're pretty much getting everything except face unlock. You're getting always on display. So it's a, it's a, it's a definitely a flagship device. I just wish it had quad HD. And I also wish it had faster charging speeds on the wireless charging and the wired charging. Okay? And definitely, I wish that notch wasn't on the display. But other than that, I love it. I've been using it now for almost a month, and I absolutely love this device. The build quality is just so sublime. I love a phone with great build quality. So thank you very much for taking the time to view this content. I know it was a little long, but I try to be as detailed as I can when I'm doing a full review for a device. Um, I also like the price for this device. Now, I got this phone for $395.00. You may be able to get it for less because LG phones depreciate really, really fast. So you're not going to have to pay um, eight or 900 like you would have when it first came out. This is why I say if you just exercise a little bit of patience and wait for a phone to come down in price, you can definitely get what you want 
for far less than what you would pay if you get it when it first comes out. All you got to do is try, you know, save your money. Unless you need a phone immediately, just save your money, wait for that price to drop. And then when you at, when it's at a, um, you know, when it's at a place where you feel comfortable getting it, then you should grab it. All right. So um, and also, once again, when, I, when we reach a thousand subscribers, I will be giving away a smartphone. I'm not going to say which one it is until we get close to that amount of subscribers. But when we do, I will be giving away a one of my smart devices, one of my smartphones, I'm saying. All right. When we reach a thousand right now, we're just a little over 700. And I do want to say I do appreciate each and every one of you that has subscribed to my channel. It is much, much appreciated. And I do appreciate your support. Thank you very much again for taking the time to view this content and everything will be time stamped down in the, in the um, description below. And also, please leave a comment if you like, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. God bless you and take care and peace. This was my review of the LG V60 ThinQ 5G.